So um, back in 1983, when I started the White Dog, it was a very simple uh, coffee shop on the first floor of my house. And uh, then I wanted to uh, start serving hot food, but I couldn't afford to put in the exhaust fans that would go all the way up through the roof, uh, you know, to the, uh, with a fan and, and, and so on. So um, I put a charcoal grill in the backyard. I don't know if anybody remembers those days who's here. <laughs> you remember those days? And I, I had a little white picket fence around the, the backyard, and I just put a collection of old lawn furniture and picnic tables out there and a charcoal grill uh, where the chef would, would cook the food until it got uh, to be cold, and then we made a tent around the grill, uh, and he would be out there with his park and boots, you know, grilling the food, and the waitresses would come down to the basement and out the back door to, to pick it up. Uh, inside, um, the dishes were done at, in the dining room uh, in the three-bowl sink in the corner, so when you finished eating, you just passed your plates over to the dishwasher who washed them right there. Um, if you needed to use the restroom, um, we actually had none in the restaurant, so you'd go upstairs to our house and wave at the kids who would be sitting on the, on the couch watching TV or whatever as you made your way to the, to the family bathroom. Um, and then at the end of the night, the, uh, the, the, the last uh, waiter would deposit the money under my pillow because it was that we had no safe. <laughs> I still have dreams about people putting money under my, under, under my pillow. Uh, and then for advertising, we would, we would go over to the Penn campus, and uh, my, my, at the time I had a two-year-old and a four-year-old, and we would pass out flyers and then run back and look in our backyard to see if any customers had, had arrived. And that's how it all began. And uh, gradually I built the, the business onto a $5 million um, company, including our shop, The Black Hat, uh, which for 20 years sold uh, fair trade and uh, locally made uh, gifts. And uh, then, well, let's see, I, I ran the, the, the White Dog for 27 years and, and just retired last year. So one of the things I think that was unique about the White Dog is, is that I did live upstairs, you know, it was living above the shop in the old-fashioned way. And this uh, helped me to develop a, a different business outlook, uh, living and working uh, in the same community, because I would see every day the people that were affected by my business decisions, whether it was my employees or my customers or uh, my, my neighbors uh, and, uh, and the natural environment in which I live. Um, so I developed a, a mission at the White Dog of service that our mission wasn't to simply maximize profits but to maximize relationships and to make uh, uh, and to serve in four ways. Uh, to serve our customers, to serve our employees, to serve our community and to serve nature. And so that um, uh, directed my attention in, in, in very different ways. One of the um, aspects of um, living above the shop is this short distance between myself as the business decision maker and those affected by those decisions. And that would help me to make decisions uh, with a heart as well as with a head. And I'll give you a couple examples of that. Uh, for instance, uh, the concept of a living wage. Um, that was, uh, when I first heard about that, I, I had the, the typical knee-jerk reaction of a business person thinking no one's going to tell me how much I should pay my employees. Uh, and a living wage is a voluntary commitment on the part of a business owner to pay not just the federally mandated uh, minimum wage, but what it actually co uh, costs a person to live in a community. Uh, how much, uh, if they work full time, how much they would need to make to pay rent, to buy food, to buy clothes, and, and, and so on. Um, so one day I was down in the, but I, I kind of dismissed this at first, but one day I was down in the, in the kitchen and three young men who were prepping vegetables who, who made below a, um, a living wage, uh, they, we never just paid minimum wage, but maybe they're making $6 an hour or whatever, and uh, th they all three looked up at me at the same time and all of a sudden the light bulb went off in my head. Of course I want to pay you know, Jack and Jim and Bill a living wage so um, they can buy what they need. Uh, anyone working at the White Dog ca uh, Cafe must, you know, make a living wage. But that was because I had personal contact. So uh, I put faces to it and I thought, yes, of course. <laughs> what have I been thinking? Um, and then the same thing happened in terms of nature. I had heard about climate change and I had heard about the importance of signing up for renewable energy. But I hadn't really been um, motivated to act on that until there was a drought in Pennsylvania about 12 years ago. And I w drove up the Poconos where I, I like to hike and saw that uh, the leaves on the trees in, in late Ju July were already starting to fall down, and the ferns on Fern Hill that used to be so high and up to my waist and lush and green swaying in the breeze and so on were all 
crumpled up um, like brown tissue paper on the floor of the forest. And as I, as I walked through the woods, there was, there was just an eerie silence and nothing but the, the breaking of the twigs and the, and the leaves. And I couldn't even hear any birds singing. And there was just such a sense of, of stress in the woods. The stream was dried up with just dust on the rocks. And all of a sudden, I just got it. I felt the stress of the woods that this was what was going to happen with climate change, that parts of the world would um, have droughts and fires. And that was the feeling I had, this feeling of that something was wrong, that there was going to be a fire at any minute. Um, and that other parts of the world would have floods and storms. And of course, um, since that time, that's, that's come to be more and more around, around the world as we see what climate change brings to us. Um, and so I, 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 I just all of a sudden knew what I had to do, and I became a tree hugger. I went over and hugged this big oak tree and pressed my face against the bark and, and said, I'm going to go back to Philadelphia and find out about how I can get renewable energy. And the White Dog then became the first business in Pennsylvania to buy 100% of our electricity from renewable sources. Uh, but that came about from my personal relationship with nature. Um, it combined uh, my intellect, where I knew uh, intellectually what should be done, with my passion, with my heart, with my love for the woods and the stream and so on uh, that, that made me take action. <clears throat> so I think that that was one of the reasons why, um, why the white dog was, was, was unique, is, is just, uh, it was never a chain, it was one, one small place. And you know, in our society, especially in the business world, uh, we're, 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 our success is measured by how much we have materially, um, and how many, how many restaurants do you have, how big is your business, and when people would hear that the white dog was well known, they'd say, well, how many white dogs do you have? I say, well, just one, you know. And I didn't know whether I was just a big chicken because I didn't want to have a whole chain of white dogs. But I began to realize that um, what was really important to me about my business uh, were the relationships that I had. Uh, and that if I grew bigger, that the, the authenticity of those relationships would diminish. Uh, my relationships you know, with, with everyone that I, I worked with and did business with and uh, sold to and bought from and, and so on. And I, I started to, to realize that there's other ways that we can grow besides maturely, that we can, we can expand our consciousness, we can increase our knowledge, we can uh, deepen our relationships, we can uh, increase our well-being and our health and have more fun. So uh, once the white dog got to a, a sustainable size financially with 200 seats and 100 employees, including in the black hat, uh, I, I stopped growing physically and started to grow deeper in my, in my community uh, and finding ways um, to, um, to, to demonstrate our interconnectedness with each other, uh, with nature, uh, that it's not about belongings, it's about belonging.